Hello everyone, welcome back. I'm excited to share the lighting and rendering workflow in Arnold for Maya. In this tutorial, I will walk you through the daylighting checklist for an interior set model. Additionally, I'll guide you on setting up render passes and 3D layer compositing in After Effects. So let's dive right in without further ado. To start with, let's explore the scene file first. I've downloaded this from internet. I'll be sharing the link in the description. This is a simple kitchen file and it has got a window and there are two doors. Uh, and uh, let's think these two doors as the doors of the interior and the possible light source could be the kitchen. So the first thing we would like to do is setting up the camera. The room is very small. So to, uh, we'll set up a camera first. So I'll go to the create cameras and then we have this option called camera. And then we can name this camera as render cam and then i'll just go to the panels and then choose from perspective render cam so that i can see the point of view of that render cam and as the room is very narrow so i need to change the focal length of this particular uh, camera so i'll be changing the focal length of this camera to maybe a 30 mm or even lesser so that i can cover the maximum part of the room here the thing is i would like to go to the render settings and we have uh, the render uh, softwares and I can choose them uh, from the list and I have got Arnold renderer here I'm going to pick that one and then we have the render size which is 960 by 540 so I'll keep this render size for now and then I'll go to the camera's uh, display settings and I'll be enabling the uh, resolution gate option so whatever is there within that box is going to be rendered so I want that nice balance of you know ground and uh, the elements of this room so once that is done I'm going to select the camera in the channel box and then lock the attributes and I'm, I want to render with neutral shaders so I'm going to select everything here and then I'm going to assign AI standard surface shader so I'll be selecting shift T to get this window I'll go to the shader and then choose AI standard surface shader okay so I'm going to put this as gray shader and then I'm going to put the roughness to 0.5 value and then pick some color so I'm going to take a color which is already there here the hue value I'll be taking the 30 saturation 0.35 and value 0.75 and i'm going to pick this color for uh, the model here so we are setting up the daylight uh, for the interior uh, anyhow the so the source of the light for the daylight is the skylight the sunlight and uh, the indirect light by those two lights and for the aesthetics you can add additional lights so i'll be talking about the skylight here so skylight is a light which is coming from the sky. I know there is no uh, nothing called skylight in real, but the ambience of the atmosphere becomes a source of light and illuminates the scene from all directions. So when there is no sunlight, which means uh, when the daylight is completely covered by the clouds, then you get something called overcast sky and then the lighting should look like this. So this is the skylight, what, what I'm talking about. There's no direct shadows and hard lighting of the sun because the sky is covered by the clouds there. And the next one is the sunlight. Sunlight is a very direct light, which creates a clear shadow, okay? Then we have the indirect light here. Indirect light is basically the light which is going to hit any surface and bounce back. And there's nothing you, you, should, you can do here. The program itself uh, does indirect lighting for you. And I'll be showing how to control indirect lighting in very simplest ways. So let's start uh, placing the skylight. So in Arnold, we have lights here, sky dome light. It's a spherical dome light, which illuminates the scene from all directions. So I'm not uh, much using the colors, but if you want to use colors for the daylight, I preferably use the color temperature chart. And then for the sky, I'm going to use anywhere 8 to 8,000 to 9,000 Kelvins, which can actually make the light of the color of the light to the bluish. I just want to stick with the neutral colors here. I'm focusing more on lighting. So I'm picking the white color instead. And then let me give it a try for the render. So I'm using this Arnold render view, which is the render view for Arnold software, unlike your traditional Maya render view here. Okay. So I'm going to set this render. I'm just going to click this. And then you get the result here and you should be able to see a very soft ambience coming from all the directions here the dome light is visible and the dome light visibility can be controlled here from the visibility section and we have camera so i if i start reducing the value you get the camera's uh, visibility the lights visibility in the camera going off so i want to use this uh, for our scene so i'm not going to touch it i'm going to put it a default uh, to one and uh, about the lighting uh, if you feel that the ambient light the light which is coming from the surroundings 
is okay for you you can generally stay by the default if not you are expecting something more uh, darker or the brighter you can play with the values of exposure here so i can select that and increase the exposure value to one and then the scene becomes more bright so right now i'm going to put the exposure value to zero and then i'm going to reduce the intensity to 0 0.6 so which can generally scale down the light intensity slightly because i just wanted that uh, contrast between the light and dark regions in my particular scene the next important thing is uh, the area lights and the ambient lights are the costliest lights in terms of rendering which may contribute a lot of noise in the scene the noise can be controlled in arnold by uh, the arnold uh, samplings here so these are the samples which you need to uh, increase and uh, there is another setting here which is within the light and here is the samples we can increase the samples to reduce the noise contributed by that light so you can keep it somewhere to three or four and if it's not sufficient you can generally raise up but uh, in increasing the samples can drastically increase the render time also okay so i'll be doing that samples value high in the final render output right now i'm going to put it to one so apart from that i'm not going to touch anything in this particular scene okay so let's create a sunlight for sunlight we have the directional light which is maya's traditional light here so i go to the create and then we have lights and we have this uh, light called directional light so i'll talk about directional light a little bit directional light doesn't come from a particular point but it comes in one single direction which means uh, moving this light anywhere does not show any effect on the result because there is no starting point or end point for it however i can rotate and control from which direction then light the light can come this directional light will simulate the sunlight precisely so when it comes to the sunlight uh, you need to pick the directional light as this is maya's traditional lights not the arnold lights actually this is not coming in the arnold lights it is coming into the maya's lights so i'm going to select that light here i have actually switched off the light skylight uh, for now just to visualize only the sunlight so i can move this light into the scene and uh, when i'm in the camera i can just set up my camera like that i can scale the light uh, the scale of the light is also not really important i'm going to select that light and i'm going to do the test renders here I'm going to name this light as the sunlight like that and then I'm just hitting the render I should be able to see that light coming up here you can go to the Arnold section uh, in the directional light and increase the exposure value sunlight is way brighter than uh, any other artificial lights you have so putting a high intensity is uh, always really uh, useful when you are simulating the daylight I have a setting here called indirect and I'm going to switch, uh, set that value to zero and you should be able to see there is uh, only the sunlight and the, the other part of the room is completely dark and this is the indirect light which i'm talking about so which is contributing the lot of light uh, which is you know uh, showing up in the scene it's just bouncing back and it adds more value to the scene and you should be able to see there is a nice rim light for the bottle and also we have some light on the trash can uh, i can start exploring the light direction so i'm going to select that light and i want to rotate that light here and i just want that light to illuminate this wall Now this looks good and you should be able to see some light is falling on the chair and I could see the shadows of the chair on the wall and also I could see the shadow of the window falling on the wall. So I'm going to uh, explore the angle value here. So I'll hit render and then uh, go for an angle of 5. So when I did that, you should be able to see the shadow of this window is blurred out and uh, the shadow of the chair is also blurred but there's a difference which generally happens in the sunlight. Anything which is far from the casting object, that object shadows will be softer. So the angle is way too much. I'm going to put an angle of 2 and just check it out. And you should be able to see the window shadow is gradually blurring out. Uh, this part of the shadow is very sharp comparative to this part of the shadow. And also I could see the shadow of the chair is also sharp in comparison with this part. Why? Because the chair is very close to the wall. So this is uh, the second light which I have placed. So if I have to place anything addition to it, I can uh, do that. Let's say I want to add some uh, add-on lights which can add more value to our scene. Yeah, you can do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set uh, up an area light. Okay, so I go to the rectangle, uh, sorry, Arnold lights and area light there. And I'm going to place it here and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. So let me switch to the perspective view to better understand the rotation. and uh, i'm going to scale this light up i 
I can just put this light outside, which is also called as portal light in so many cases. So I'm going to put that way. Out. Okay. So let's check this light by hiding the sunlight. For that, I'm going to select the light and I'm going to switch off illuminates by default option off and then go for a render. So you got a very dark scene. So I'm going to select the light and increase the exposure value to 10. And then I got that nice light coming on the bottle, on the table and on the um, chair. Okay, so that adds more um, the luminance from the window. Okay, so I can explore the values of maybe 12 and then get that bright. And you should be able to see this furniture which is there on the wall is also casting some shadow. Let's have a look on the render with all the three lights put together. I'm just sitting in the render and uh, you should be able to see this nice illuminated room. Okay. Let's set up the ACS for this particular scene. The ACS has to be set the, at the initial stage of uh, the, uh, the scene setup and the lighting. But I just wanted uh, you to see the difference between uh, linear workflow and the ACS workflow. So how to set up the ACS? Just go to the uh, preferences and then go to the color management and then browse the ACS file. I've, I'll be sharing the link from where you can actually download this ACS. Uh, so this is the file you need to choose config.ocio. Once you have opened up, enable the use cases and you should be able to see the colors are drastically changed now. Okay. And uh, it, it was like very pale uh, uh, in the last render, but this time you're getting that nice real contrast uh, in the result. Okay. So now it's time for the render setting and setting up the render passes. So I have uh, these three lights here. I want to render the passes for these three lights separately. So I'll go to the render settings and we have this AOVs and we have a lot of built-in passes. However, we can just select uh, this option called add custom and then add our own render pass. Uh, so I would like to take uh, this pass here called diffuse uh, direct. So what is diffuse direct is, um, sorry, this is volume. So let me select the diffuse direct and then diffuse passes and then just see the result first. So I'll go to the Arnold render view and then hit a render. And then if I just go to the diffuse pass, it is giving me a light information, the color information and the indirect light information in the diffuse. Uh, whereas diffuse direct is giving me the direct light. There's no indirect lighting in this and there is color also, but there is no indirect light. So I'm going to use, uh, I mean, just for the sake of understanding, I've picked them and shown you here. So I'm going to select the skylight first and in AOV group, I'm going to name this as sky and then go to the sun i'm going to name this as sun and then name this as wind which is a short form of the window so i'm going to select this diffuse underscore and then choose uh, indirect okay uh, so when i render this okay and then just check the result uh, for the indirect you get the indirect lighting information for the direct you get the direct lighting information so what is that i'm going to do now is uh, i'm going to copy this and then I'm going to name this as sun underscore diffuse okay and then hit enter and then I just close and open the Arnold render view and then let me choose the sun diffuse indirect so you should be able to see the the name of the AOV group has been added in the suffix so you get this result here so we have to choose uh, this uh, sort of thing for a direct also. Okay. So I'm going to copy this uh, name and I go to the add custom and then just underscore and then put the sky and then underscore then put win. Okay. And I'm going to choose uh, the indirect uh, pass also. So I'm going to copy that and then underscore sky and then underscore win okay so i've got all the diffuse passes for direct and indirect lighting so let me render this close and open the render view and then when i just open up this passes this is the skylight this is the sunlight this is the window light this is indirect light from the sky indirect light from the sun and then indirect light from the window so you have all that passes here the next thing is uh, we will add uh, the specular passes so we have uh, specular direct and specular indirect passes so i'm going to take both of them and then here i'm going to name this as the sky for the specularity 
I'm going to add the custom attribute, so custom AOV, and then name this as the sun, and then name this as the wind. So once uh, I've got that, again, I'm just closing and then testing that renders. So let me see the specular direct sky, which is going to give the specular pass for the skylight. And then we have the sunlight specular pass. Then we got uh, the window light specular pass. Then indirect uh, specularity, the specular highlights formed by from the indirect lighting. Okay. So those are some important passes here. Uh, the next thing I would like to do is I'll go to the render settings and then choose uh, a pass called emission pass. Uh, this one. Okay. And uh, I'm just checking if I have to pick any other passes here. Okay, that should do the uh, job. So I'm going to choose the camera anti-aliasing samples to 5. And I'm going to set the diffuse uh, to 4, specular to 4. So these are the samples I'm taking for this render. Skylight, I uh, have uh, the samples. I'm going to put it a 3 or maybe 4 for that. Sunlight, I'm going to put a uh, 3 and then window light i'm going to put a 3 so that should generally put down uh, the noise the next thing is uh, i just want this all passes to be separate okay so if i go to the driver and then merge ovs all will merge into one aov under exr but i'm not choosing exr uh, format i'm choosing the uh, tiff format here so i'll uh, select the tiff or i can choose the png uh, in that matter so i'm going, I'm going to select that way and then name this as kitchen okay so once that is done, I'm going to change the camera to perspective from, uh, from perspective to render cam and the render size. Let's try for a HD, which is 1280 by 720 pixels. That should do the job. And uh, once that is done, I can go for the render. So I'll go to the edit and then go to the project image directory. And we have uh, a folder created in a particular location and I've uh, placed that link here. So my saved files will go to that location. OK, so edit project image directory just copy that value that uh, link uh, and then you can generally browse it later now what i'm going to do is i'm going to open up this uh, render view which is maya's render view and then i'm going to choose the render sequence but but make sure that it's single image if not it renders the whole sequence okay so we have uh, one important thing before going into the rendering that is if i go to the channel box we have the render layers okay so render layers are uh, basically not available for you uh, unless until you go to the render settings and enable the setting from here. So in the preferences, you can just open up this uh, rendering tab and then here render setup has to be changed to the legacy render layers. So when you do that, uh, once you need to close Maya and open and then you will get this render layers, which is a, a old way of uh, setting up the renders. So I'm going to select all the geometry here. And I'm going to select the lights, okay. And I'm going to put this into a new layer, which is going to be uh, the light. Uh, I'm just naming it as light render, light layer. And then, and, um, and I'm going to choose one important thing in AOVs that I want to render this AOVs for this layer. For that, you can right click here, and then just say create layer override. And then uh, next time when you create another layer, you can switch off that uh, layer overrides there, okay. So I'm just enabling that for all the layers here because uh, if I have to render some other passes like uh, fog or something, I have to set up something unique and then I I, do, I want them to be switched off for that particular layer. So uh, I'm not going to create anything uh, beyond that, but I just wanted uh, you to understand this. Okay. Now I'm going to open the um, Maya's render view. Make sure that you have nicely expanded it to the full size. And then open render sequence and then just uh, uh, don't overlap it put it aside and then choose render cam because once you start rendering uh, you cannot move any ele ui elements of the maya so choose that and then go to the render sequence option here so it takes some time and you get the render so i have done the rendering of this uh, scene uh, you could see there are separate folders for each and every pass so i want uh, this way if you render open exr it will be in one image itself that's a choice again you can choose between so i, I just uh, wanted one uh, supporting render pass which is ambient occlusion this is a old school again but uh, this will uh, always help you to add that more ambient feel to your scene if the scene is pretty dark uh, so i could see there is some dark regions and if i want that regions to be bright uh, then definitely uh, it would be a great help so what i'm going to do is i'm going to select 
so i'll be uh, you know uh, selecting the geometry here so from the outliner and i'm going to add it into a new render layer so i'm going to name this as ao which is a short form of ambient occlusion okay so let's uh, just uh, open the hyper shade here and then just have a look on the arnold shaders then you should be able to see there is a shader called ambient occlusion okay so i need to just to make sure that in, i'm in the layer uh, select all the geometry here except the lights and then press shift t and then go to the arnold and then choose uh, ambient occlusion shader okay so if you could see if i when i select the uh, light layer it's showing up the lights okay and when i'm selecting the ambient occlusion it's not showing up the lights and also there's a shader change which is called layer overriding which is happening here so i'm going to select that from my view and then uh, i will just uh, do a test render but before going into that you need to switch off that and then create a layer override for all these passes okay so what that actually does is it will um let me show you when i'm in the light layer this layer overrides are on i mean these passes will be rendered for the uh, the light and when i'm choosing this one they don't render so i'll quickly switch it off and then do the layer overriding so i'll go to the arnold render view and then hit the render button and you should be able to see this a nice result so let me select uh, the shader so the, the thing is i just wanted uh, the darks to be gone in this area because it may give the muddy result so let me try with a value of 0.2 fall off and uh, this is working and i want exactly the same and you want slight spread of this dark so you can maybe work with uh, a fall off of 0.1 maybe this is much better so i want this pass to be rendered so when i go to the channel box here and then in render layer we have this uh, render settings and we have uh, this option where you can avoid rendering this layer so i say that i don't want to render the light uh, layer i just want to render only the ai layer so again i'm going to use the uh, maya's render view and then go to the render sequence and then hit render so the render was uh, real so i'm in after effects here i'm going to take a new composition and i'm going to choose this width to 1280 by 720 and uh, just create the comp or when you're taking the composition you can generally choose uh, hd here not the full hd one and then you can generally go for the same size okay okay uh, so firstly i would like to go with the ambient occlusion okay bring that layer which i'm going to put it on the bottom uh, here okay and uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to take a new solid uh, layer for the diffuse material color okay so i'm just picking roughly this color and then put that layer below and this one uh, this kitchen sorry ambient occlusion will get multiplication effect or uh, blending mode so go here and then choose multiply and you should be able to see this nice effect going on now what i'm going to do is uh, I, i'm going to you know put them into one group and that i can do by pre-composing them uh, and uh, i'm going to move all the attributes into the new composition AO base okay so that's the layer and uh, i'll go to the effects and then just do the color correction tool uh, so I'll, I'll be using the a color correction exposure and then I reduce the exposure just uh, put it dark okay and uh, if I reset it uh, you get it back but I just wanted it to be dark as much as possible okay this is going to add the fill to our layer let me show you how so I'll go to the project and then import uh, the file and um, I'm going to import the sunlight first okay so diffuse uh, direct sun okay and uh, let me put this one on top of this layer and then change the blending mode to a linear dodge or screen they almost look same but slightly there's a difference linear dodge is basically add blending mode so you should be able to see this information is there and you got the light on top of that now what is that i'm trying to do is the dark regions which were there they may not be there uh, with our basic scene so let's import all the other layers here so we have diffuse uh, sun and then we have the skylight okay so i'm going to put it below here and the blending mode for this layer is also linear dodge or screen you can take any of the blending modes 
Now I'm taking the window light. Uh, make sure that it is the diffuse one and then put it and as this is add blending mode the sequence is not really uh, important sorry layer blending mode linear dodge now you should able to see the difference uh, when i added this ambient occlusion as the base layer okay so that dark regions are covered which were dark earlier don't worry actually we have indirect passes also uh, you can select these three uh, layers and uh, you can pre-compose them also layer and then just uh, pre-compose and then name this as diffuse uh, passes okay then change the blending mode of this passes put together to linear dodge okay so anytime you can control that direct lighting uh, in one single layer or you can always double click and open this and control this if you wanted okay or uh, you can even avoid using the pre-composition method if you want all the control to be happening in this layers tag for you okay uh, so let's import the other layers there's a problem uh, with the names don't uh, get confused with them so i'll import um, the indirect uh, lights now so let me choose that indirect uh, pass you need not actually bring them separate it's not really um, required but for the sake of just control or passes i just added nothing really important here about separating the indirect pass for lights also so all uh, all are basically the linear dodges only So all the passes have come here, uh, which are basically required. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add uh, um, all these layers uh, in one place uh, by doing this pre-compose option. And uh, the reason is I just wanted uh, some, you know, color corrections to be done on uh, one single node. So I'm using the curves node and then adding that here. And then you can generally make it bright or dark as per the requirement here. So I'll choose the blue layer and then just uh, reduce that and then uh, increase the red. And then you get that nice uh, saturation to your whole image. You can also play with uh, the shadow regions and then get that nice red tint in the shadows, which gives that character to the picture. Uh, the next thing I would like to add uh, on top of this is the glow. I would like to take, take the stylized glow effect to this. And uh, we have uh, the threshold i'm going to reduce that threshold all the way down and then reduce the intensity and then put the intensity of maybe 0 0.02 or so uh, which is very uh, less okay so 0 0.02 should do the job and then you can play with the bloom so this adds that nice glow to your um, final result and the lastly I would like to import the emission uh, which is a separate pass so select that and then put this on top of this one and then choose the blending mode of linear dodge so that it will be sitting here and then I'm going to add the glow effect to this one and uh, I'm going to uh, increase the radius and then start playing with the threshold values and you should able to see i'm getting that nice uh, bloom on the result here okay uh, it looks uh, really nice the luminance is clearly visible and uh, that post production is adding more value to the result one thing is uh, this picture has got still some noise so i need to go back to maya and fix certain things in terms of samples of the scene okay I hope you enjoyed the video. I encourage you to try this out for yourself. The scene file is available in the description. Please share your final output with me and I'll feature your images on Reigns Academy's social media handles. Feel free to ask any questions in the comment section. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe for more content. Thank you.